Um, so I'm very pleased to invite, uh, uh, I have to admit I'm biased, they're good friends of mine, but I'm delighted to see uh, Joanna and Siasian in England um, and we'd like to ask you a few questions about yourselves and your folding. So please come and sit here. So, fairly simple questions. If if you don't understand the question, just just kind of just what do look. You, what what? what? <laughs> um, so, Joanne, can you tell me how you first started uh, with paper folding? Uh, well, I was folded inside myself, inside in the stomach of my mother. <laughs> <laughs> And when I was born, I was unfolded. <laughs> <laughs> then I saw my hand, I saw it exists, the folds, and sang the folds, I can move the hand. No? Then I was lucky because I was living the first years of my life, the eight years, by my grandfather, and he was teacher, school teacher, and he was father. No? And he never teach me. But he fold something, and so grow in me the wish to fold. No? I discovered it. it's important not to learn to fold. The important is to have the wish. And through the wish, uh, I was dependent, folding dependent, and I remain folding dependent. It was how I start. And I asked to my grandfather. No, he asked me, "What, what do you want? I fold." No? Don't say, come here, I fold a bird for you. No, no, no. They say, what do you want? Then the, the most important was not only the wish, but the knowledge, the choose what I want. I, have, I, I am free, I am a free person, and I have to choose what I desire, what I want. And today, many people that have the liberty to choose, they don't know what they choose. Right? Uh, and you probably you have the experience that somebody come and say fold something for me no? and you ask what doesn't matter something no? teach me something but doesn't matter no no it's important to know what no? because we fold not for nothing we, we fold for something no? and that's the the key element that my grandfather transmit to me to know why we fold no? the technique and um, it's very interesting no? But it's second capital. Huh? And it was my start with the folding. I said, please fold me a train. Huh? My grandfather, of course, didn't know how to make a train. Huh? Then he took a piece of paper, like that. He said, well, we have the rail. <laughs> <laughs> how we put the train? Huh? We have another paper. So we have the rail. We have the rail, and then I'm gonna follow. Say, well, now we make the train. No, we put one train here. We have one wagon. Huh? It was not a folder. He he knew some models, no? but. But not a, not an expert. But he created at the moment with the minimal folds something that it was for me possible to recognize no? the rail and, and the and the train. Something impossible for many of us. We don't know how to fold the train. It's a very complicated. No? It exists some trains, no? but we don't know. It. And uh, it was uh, my beginning. Okay, stop. <laughs> so, so how did you start to um, enjoy paper folding? Uh, I think it, uh, there are two periods. One is when I was a child, and uh, the, I learned uh, some simple models. And uh, these models are from, on, uh, from the book and outside the book. 
outside the book, the family member or some friends, they know some traditional models. And uh, one day, my grandfather bought a simple book for children, children paper folding. And uh, in, on this book, the paper folding is uh, drawn by diagram, it is in system. So I can read the book by myself. And uh, also, my grandfather teach me uh, with teaching me paper folding with the book. And I can choose which model I like. When my grandfather is not at home, I can read the book by myself. And I was very interested in the diagrams. And, uh, but later, when the study became busy, I didn't follow too much. But some years ago, I, I, want to find, I want to do something. And I remember paper folding. And I search on internet. And I find a modern, complicated paper folding books. And I found the, the, these models are totally different from what I thought uh, when I was a child. It's, it's too complicated and very beautiful. And uh, then I start uh, to look for the, the different uh, models and uh, fold by myself. Okay. Joanne, you, you founded a group called Padere, which is short for Paper Folding Documentation and Research. Can you tell us a little bit about it and why you think it's important? What? <laughs> uh, well, when I don't know you, but when, when I start uh, seriously to, to, to fold, uh, um, uh, I, I feel I need to, to learn more. And I can learn from the last Japanese author next year but I can learn from the folders that existed before me in the last century, in the last two centuries, in the last three centuries, because they, we don't have the objects what they folded, but we have the documents that explain the techniques uh, and why they do that, which material they use. We have an incredible quantity of uh, Yoshizawa is no more here through us, no? but we have the books of Yoshizawa and we can read that and understand what he made during his life. No? And before Yoshizawa it existed an uh, uh, incredible uh, quantity of folders, unknown folders, anonymous folders, that which, uh, which we can learn a lot, really a lot, from many perspectives. No? And uh, if you won't be architect, no? You go to the university and you study architecture. If you want to clean the road, you go to some office, public office, and you receive something to clean the road. But if you want to be folder, that doesn't exist a place to, to learn to be folder. You know? And then I decided to collect these old documents to start 20 years ago, uh, old documents to learn myself. And without, without no I create an archive uh, library that today is, is uh, more or less 5,500 uh, documents in 30 language, no? different language. Mostly old documents, not new documents. Some new documents, but mostly old. And that it was my formation, no? how I... And then I decide uh, this, this, this art from library or archive must be useful for other people because it's very useful for me. Né? Then I decide to um, use this information to create, for example, projects like the didactic, né? how to transmit the, the folding né? to other persons. These books, these documents mostly explain that, how to transmit, uh, how they uh, explain folding instructions without diagrams, only with words without the Yoshizawa Randlet uh, system. No? It was very complicated and they found very interesting solutions. No? And I think that's, uh, that's, uh, that's the most important thing why... I, I don't want to create a, a, an archive on a library, but it was the result of my own need. No? But, yes. um, can you explain a little bit about what inspires you to create a model and is it uh, are all your models complicated, or do you do simple ones as well? Mm. At first, uh, I was surprised by the beautiful, complicated model. So my at that time, my goal is to invent a complicated model, and I tried that. And uh, 
uh, but later, later, I find they are not only complicated models, they are simple models, but simple but beautiful models. So now I try both. Okay, thank you. Uh, Joanne, you've, uh, over 10 years ago, you founded a group called Folding Didactics. And I wonder if you could explain a little bit of a, about why you feel the origami conventions in Germany didn't provide what you wanted and you felt the need to create a, an alternative convention. Yes. Um, if you look in the constitution of all the origami associations, they say, all without exception, I'll say, the, the, one of the goals of the association is the, the education, the formation of teachers to, to teach origami. Right? And, and frequently, <laughs> no one association makes that. No? Then I, I, I propose that in Germany, and they say, I'm sorry, we are a folders association, not a teacher's association. Uh, yes, it's in the constitution, but, uh, well, then, then we don't do it, because the members of the association don't, don't like it. They won't fall for, for themselves, no? a little bit. No? Then I decided to organize myself a parallel, no competition with the other. The members are not folders, are educators. No? Uh, and they uh, use the folding as uh, for their edu education. Some, some ones in the schools, other in the hospitals, other in the, in the prisons, other for therapy. And I made that principle at the first moment because I observed uh, with all the respect of the world for all the creators, but that not the greatest creators of the origami of the world, they are not necessarily the best origami teachers of the world. And, uh, but I, I don't want to offend nobody, please. Huh? But it, it's that's the reality. Otherwise, uh, people that are folder perhaps, but never create something, they can be extraordinary uh, with uh, a very good talent to teach, no? and, 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 and not necessary. We, we think the, the creators must be the, be the best diagram drawers, the best uh, teachers, the best... Uh, no, they make uh, uh, self, the, the creators are not the best folders. Uh, many times, uh, folders that don't create fold better one creation than the creator itself. Not always, but sometimes. Huh? Then, we saw they, they are two elements, the education element and the creation element. And so, sometimes we put one under the other. No, they are two uh, with two different... Uh, and, for example, in the origami, we think... Uh, we spoke at uh, last question. Eh? Uh, we have the, the, the wrong idea that that's, that's complicated, is good, and simple, is easy, is, is low worth. No? And that's not true. Uh, easy and nice, that's very seldom. No? Uh, so seldom as complicated and nice. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I, I don't want to say no, no one sample. Huh? But uh, sometimes they are extremely intricate models, and at the end it remains as something. No? But but mm, the, you look for the beauty, uh, or, and, and you don't find that. No? And then such elements, for example, the napkins. The, you don't fall good. You can fold napkins, no? or you the, the, the second or third class. The second class is the letter fold. No? Napkins and letter fold that can be too, very intricate too, and very nice and very ugly too. No? And then these elements can be conducted much better in the education. No? where the, the folding of napkins or the folding of, of letters can be used for the educational goal. You don't need to fold an impossible model for children. No? And then, then it was for me uh, very important to transmit all what I, I think I know to them. The main reason to transmit it is because when, when I teach here in Colchester yes, yesterday, the feeling that I have is that, that I am the first that learn. No? The people think they learn from me one model or one technique or something. But every second during the teaching, I have the feeling I, I recite much more than you. No? Mm -hmm. And, and this, 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 uh, when, when you discover that, then, then, then you are <coughs> education dependent no? and you like 
very much this subject. You appreciate why it's so important. The education is not only one in one direction, it's absolute in two directions. The teacher learn, the, the pupil learn, and, and both learn. If not, it's, 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 it's no sense. And it's instruction, it's not education. Huh? And it was the, a little bit the idea. Then we create uh, 2006, the first year, the, the, um, the, fo the folding the didactic convention eh, only for educators, many folders from, but uh, mainly is the uh, explained the education uh, ways of that. No? And it was excellent. And I saw after that grow in Italy another convention similar. We invited them in Germany and they make the same. We trained in England, in Sheffield, no? to start uh, uh, some course for teachers, no? uh, and it was a success, no? but uh, we need to continue that. No? We make in Catalonia, in my country too, then, then for the last four years, then, then such convention. And uh, the kind of people that participate in Italy itself, they are 200 participants in the didactic convention, and no one is folder, no? all are teachers. They need that, but they don't know how. Then they need to buy a, br a bridge through the folders and the educators. The educators can learn a lot of things from the folders, and the folders can learn a lot of things from the educators. And the construction of this bridge is a little bit the, the meaning of this didactic conference. No? Yeah, you understood? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I personally feel it's, it's really important because the, the standard Oregon the convention for me is about recreation. You're, you're having fun, you're learning models. Um, but there's the whole other side to it, is the, the ethics of origami and the history and, um, and how to teach it. We, Mick, Mick Guy has spoke many times that he runs these classes, how not to, not to teach origami. And I'm usually the prime example of how not to teach. But we, I, I think we let ourselves down sometimes uh, by not putting the time in to learn how to teach. We love the subject and we know the subject, but as John says, it's not the same as teaching it. And these didactic conferences, the, the, the emphasis is much more on communication of information and ideas. And they're, they're fantastic. You should go to them if, if you can. Can I ask a question? Uh, later. Later. Yes, go on then. Go on then. You are our president. Are you sure? You're entitled to answer it. I'll wait your turn. You're no, okay. no, um, I've got mixed feelings about um, Oregon USA. They put out um, their conventions, they put out uh, uh, um, ideas for teachers. Guidelines for teachers, guidelines for students. And I have to say, I find that pretty off-putting. I mean, as a, when I, if I were a student and I read their list of things, what I should and shouldn't do, I think, oh, I don't think I really want to go to this. It's a bit like, it's a bit hard. And I think somehow the job of the, 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 the teacher and the student is to enjoy, to participate. And to, it's a dialogue, isn't it? And I, you know, the, all this thing, you must never touch the, the paper of the, the, of the, of the folder. If you're the, if you're the teacher, you, you never touch the student's model. Yeah. It's a bit hard, I think. I think some of the rules are harsh, but, but equally, it's so easy. People come to a convention for the first time, and if the teacher isn't clued up and doesn't find out about people's skills or whether they have hearing issues or any of these simple basic things that teachers do uh, for granted, we're, we're likely to have people going away thinking, oh, I can't do origami because that class said simple, but it wasn't. So th there's a balance to be struck. Of course there is. Yeah. Sorry, well, I don't think there's a topic, though, sorry. Not, not at all. So, Sienna, yeah, um, we, we learned yesterday about some of the history of Chinese folding. Can you tell us what's happening with sort of modern creative Chinese folding? I couldn't name a single Chinese creator, and there must be some other people out there that we should we should sort of research? Mm. For me, I think uh, uh, in the Asian time, perhaps not only China, but uh, the other country, you invent something. I don't mean, I don't mean paper folding. I mean some, something in daily life. You, you don't know who did it first. You only know some very famous person, he, he have that. For example, the paper, uh, China, we, on our book, uh, oh, we know there is a, a man called Cai Lun invented a paper. But in fact, uh, 
uh, I read more about it. It said uh, before this man, it already exists something similar to paper. This man only did some development on make, uh, making paper. Uh, but uh, because he's famous, so we treat him as the first man. And I think uh, as a paper folding, it's, uh, it's uh, similar. If we afford some models, uh, at that time, no internet, no one know who created this model. And uh, this model is a nice model, and uh, all people learn how to fold it and continue today. And uh, we collect a lot of books uh, in our, uh, the oldest is about 100 years ago, and during these 100 years, uh, some model repeat and repeat, and in fact, uh, the, the the book, every book have the writer, but uh, we don't know who is the first one to create some new models because uh, they, they, these books are for education. They use it as a material, not for a personal artwork. And, and the, the, at that time, no internet, and it's, uh, it's very difficult to say who, is, uh, who, who creates the model first. But uh, recently, I, re uh, I read uh, some, or there are some information on the internet, and I see someone that uh, the newspaper report uh, someone especially good at uh, paper folding. And, uh, and gradually, we, we know some people. And uh, now, uh, we are very active on the forum, paper folding forum. And, uh, and uh, we, we gradually have the concept that, oh, Everyone have also right of your own model, and uh, now more Chinese creators uh, have become more active on the internet. I, I, I feel it's if you look at the, the game of snooker, um, maybe ten years ago there was perhaps one Chinese player, and now every competition uh, you see dozens of young talented players, and I think origami it, it's taken off in Korea, it's taken off in Vietnam amazing designs come out and I think China will explode fairly soon and we'll see some really gifted creators coming out of there. Yeah, I think so. Do we have any questions? We've got five minutes maybe. Any questions for our guests? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, can I just, I'll just go to the, um, you said that you didn't know of any schools to go to, like colleges or anything, to learn origami. But I was looking on the internet recently, and I saw there was a, an origami academy in Jordan, in the Middle East. Does, um, does, anyone, does anyone know anything about Is this the Paul Jackson enterprise, uh, Paul and Mary? Uh, no, it's in Jordan. So I don't know. I mean, that's what I'm just throwing it out. I just literally found this origami academy. They've got a Facebook page. Right. But I couldn't find out much else, so I sent them a message on the Facebook page and no one's replied. So I don't know, I don't know if anyone does. I just thought I'd yes. mention it because it exists, the Origami Academy in Jordan. I think that the, there are a number of places that are, are kind of offering educational structured courses. Mir Miri Golan is one. Uh, that is kind of, that's a, a commercial enterprise and I think the didactics that they make a special effort to to exclude nobody for reasons of finance. Mm. So if you can't afford a hotel, then you can sleep on the floor of the gym. The yeah. school bring your sleeping bag. And I think this is one of the key things that sometimes origami conventions can be pricey. Yeah. And if you don't have your own transport and you know a decent credit card, you struggle to get through. I mean, the co next year is going to cost a small fortune for it's the ridiculous that is. Yeah. So one of for me one of the key input key feature of the didactics is that they aim for people who don't have much money. Um, and I think that's very important. Yeah. I'm joining. <laughs> Just a quick question, Sias Yen. Um, you have a model on display and it's um, a tree made from a single piece of paper and it's, um, how do I describe it? Um, it's flat. Yeah. You've, um, you've created a sort of tree silhouette. Yeah. It's very different from the rest of your work. What inspired it? And also, how did you create it? What's the paper? And did you use white folding? I just thought it was beautiful. It's beautiful. Thank you. Uh, this model is a, a recent, recent model. I was inspired by the tessellation. Because uh, I see the tessellation, they are very beautiful. And uh, they take photos by the shadow. And uh, for me, I think uh, the, 
the translation is very good, but I want to uh, do something different because the uh, translation is very regular. You repeat the same shape. Uh, and I, I, I think I want to use the shadow to make uh, uh, irregular things. More, more organic shape. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so I tried. Uh, and uh, at first, you must uh, use a very, very transparent paper. At first, I use the plastic paper. This is used uh, for, for uh, making um, presents for the, the cover of flower or cover something and you send it to somebody. The transparent paper, they are very beautiful they, because uh, they have color, they are gray or some color else. But I, so I first uh, fold with the transparent paper and the, and the problem is uh, it uh, is plastic and it can't fix the shape. I use many crips and butter uh, crips and butter uh, it's a uh, it's, it's okay, but if you want to find some details, it's very hard. So I use another paper. And another paper is my first idea, before the plastic paper, is the, the kitchen paper. You use the, the paper for cake, or that's a transparent paper. That's very fine and cheap and, uh, and big. So I use that to try again the trees. And I, I think the tree is the simple simplest to fold. Yeah, I, I also think of other patterns, but uh, I need time to make that. Thank you. It's lovely. About um, Chinese creators, I mean, I'm, I'm an infatuate surfer of, and hunter, of, uh, hunter out of new people, uh, interesting designs, and I know that there are uh, already a good number of interesting Chinese folders. But the first name that I think lots of people already know is Kei Chan. Uh, yes. For people in Hong Kong, there's a Hong Kong group, and I think you can, we can call that China, can't we? And then there's another guy whose name, his real name, I can't remember or pronounce even if I could. And his, he, but he goes by the pen name of Obelisk. Oh, I know. He is superb. You need to look for Obelisk. I don't, do you know what his name is? Uh, Chen Xiao. Anyway, so you remember that. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, really fine work. Yeah. Uh, yes. I'm not sure where he lives. The trouble is that. That our knowledge in the in the West of Chinese geography is pretty poor, <laughs> uh, so you know, geography not easy. But there certainly are some notable uh, creative folks. And of course, the, the people in in Singapore they have Chinese roots. Even Francis Au, I think yes. his background is Chinese. If you go on Nicholas Terry's site, Origami Shop, he has a couple of books which are three downloads, mm -hmm. and they're uh, Chinese New Year. Mm -hmm. And they are full of fantastic models by Chinese creators that I've never seen anything by elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And I, it feels like there's, I don't know if there's a strong community there that's been working the way. They've clearly spent the time and they've become talented creators. So maybe it's going to flower soon and and we'll know more about it. If it's not already planned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we'll know more about it. Yeah. Okay, suddenly we're, we're a bit pushed for time because everyone's overslept. So I'm, I'm going to uh, call a halt to, to the questioning here and we're going to move on to the exhibition view. But I'd like to thank both our guests, Joanne Salas and Sir. <laughs>